Spring Offensive by Wilfred Owen. We're going to learn about a poet's use of diction, their word choice, and we're going to learn about how a poet creates suspense in the way they structure a poem or lay it out. We're going to learn about structure. And we're also going to learn about rhetorical questions and how and why they are effective. And finally, we're going to learn about a sense of horror. Um, this is the last poem Owen ever wrote. Um, he finished it just before he died, before he was shot in battle. Um, and he probably knew it was going to be the last poem he ever wrote. So that is something important. Take a look at the other contexts on um, the slide. Uh, you can pause that. What I would like you to do by yourselves is either read through in your head the actual poem. Um, you can pause the screen or um, read it to the person sitting next to you. It's important that you have a go at it before you listen to my explanation. So these are the um, verses of the poem. I'm going to read it through now with you. Halted against the shade of a last hill, they fed and lying easy were at ease and finding comfortable chests and knees carelessly slept but many there stood still to face the stark blank sky beyond the ridge knowing their feet had come to the end of the world so here i've got a picture um, which illustrates um, a group of men in a similar position coming to the edge of a ridge um, about to um, go to the end of the world in other words enter the battle and look at the blank sky in the picture which is a uh, it, a quote in the poem as well um, and they carelessly slept so this indicates these soldiers are um, very tired so they've been up all night um, working de sorting out for the offensive marveling they stood and watched the long grass swirled by the may breeze murmurous with wasp and midge for though the summer oozed into their veins like the injected drug for their bones pains sharp on their souls hung the imminent line of grass fearfully flashed the sky's mysterious glass so they are amazed by the beautiful may day and the imagery um, suggests this the summer oozed into their veins like an, the injected drug um, so it's like opium it's like heroin going into them they feel the beauty of nature here this is a recurrent theme in uh, Owen's poetry the beauty of nature but the horror of man-made things and then suddenly they have an imminent line of grass. Um, this imminent means uh, it's about to happen. Something is uh, going to happen. In other words, a battle is going to happen. And um, fearfully flash the sky's mysterious glass. So we get a sense of perhaps a flashing um, of um, glasses, refracted glasses um, across the battlefield but also um, the glass of the sky and um, the sky looks glassy. Hour after hour they ponder the warm field and the far valley behind where the buttercups are blessed with gold their slow boots coming up where even the little brambles would not yield but clutched and clung to them like sorrowing hands they breathe like trees unstirred again more beautiful pastoral imagery. Pastoral imagery is to do with the countryside and the picture here is a picture of buttercups kind of well summarizing the imagery that's actually in the poem. Um, even the brambles they cling to them like sorrowing hands so that nature is like this kind of um, sorrowful for what's going to happen to these soldiers. Um, they breathe like trees unstirred, they're very, very still like trees, but they're breathing, they're alive. 
till, like a cold gust thrilled the little word at which each body and its soul begird and tighten them for battle. No alarms or bugles, no high flags, no clamorous haste, only a lift and flare of eyes that face the sun, like a friend with whom their love is done. O oh, larger shone that smile against the sun, mightier than whose bounty these have spurned. So there's no bugle into battle, and this is um, no high flags, no clamorous haste, that clamorous shouting haste uh, speed. So there's no kind of great speed. There's just the flicker of eyes, the flare of eyes, that they know that their love is done. In other words, they're going to their deaths. Um, a larger shone that smile against the sun. Um, so the um, smile uh, of the soldiers saying goodbye to each other is, is a huge goodbye. These are soldiers that are great friends. They've formed a real bond, mightier than whose bounties these have spurned. So soon they topped the hill and raced together over an open stretch of herb and heather, exposed, and instantly the sky burned with fury against them, and sudden, soft, sudden cups opened in thousands for their bloods, and the green slopes chasmed and steepened sheer to infinite space. So suddenly, from this beautiful piece of nature, we have this fury and sudden cups opened in thousands for their blood. So sudden um, cups in the ground or sudden kind of holes in the ground opened up because they were being bombed, they were being fired at, and their blood fills up these cups. And the green slopes chasmed, uh, turned into caves, and steep and sheer to infinite space became this kind of infinite, everlasting space of war. And I think this picture... Um, from Verdun, from the First World War, kind of captures that to a degree. We get a sense of like suddenly this awful battleground where ba basically no one is spared. Of them who running on that last high place leapt to swift unseen bullets, or went up on the hot blast and fury of hell's upsurge, or plunged and fell away past the world's verge, some say God caught them even before they fell. So in other words, um, this long sentence um, really shows that they were dead before they even fell to the ground. Um, the hot blast and fury of hell's upsurge. An upsurge is a, a great going up or a great kind of welling up of something. And the hot blast, we get a kind of sense of the heat and the fury of this thing. It's like hell. And I've got a picture of Hieronymus Bosch here to kind of give a sense where, to, where the devil is taking souls to hell. Um, give a sense of the kind of religious imagery that's here. Remember, Owen was a uh, came from religious background. He lost his faith, but he uses the imagery from religion to make create a sense of horror here. But what say such as from existence brink ventured, but drave too swift to sink? The few who rushed in the body to enter hell, and there out fiending all its fiends and flames with superhuman inhumanities, long famous glories, immemorial shames, and crawling slowly back, have by degrees regained cool, peaceful air in wonder. Why speak they not of comrades that went under? Another very long, complex sentence, but basically saying that there are a few who actually out fiend all its fiends, out fiend all the hell of um, battle and um, see the superhuman inhumanities, the terrible things that have happened, um, and they crawl slowly back. Um, they're alive, in other words, so there are a few that actually survive. Um, and why do they not speak of Conrad's that went under? So why why do they not um, speak 
uh, of the people that died. Um, the, the poem closes with this rhetorical question, why is it that people who have been in battle never really talk about it? Now I've deliberately put in a terrible picture here of a child um, injured in an Iraqi bombing raid um, to give you a sense of the horror of war and to give you a sense of why perhaps these soldiers didn't speak of anything. Um, it is a very upsetting picture, but I want you to feel some sort of empathy for Owen here. This is a real poem. And um, notice the closing rhyme, wonder and under. Um, they're gazing in wonder that they're alive, you know. Um, you know, perhaps it is a wonder that this little boy here is alive. And why not speak they of those that went under? Um, you know, why do why do these people, survivors, not talk about it? Because it is too, too terrible to think about. And so the poem closes with this. We don't know that actually this is the real ending of it. Owen was shot um, before we kind of got a sense of whether this was the ending. This is a long, complicated poem, but if you get the basic idea of it, that it's about a spring offensive, an attack um, that's happening in spring, and it starts with this beautiful pastoral imagery and ends with a picture of hell, and ends with a common theme in Owen's poetry that the people who've been in war don't actually like to speak of it, and in fact these poems are sort of the rare examples of someone really looking in depth at the horror of war. Very useful link here to get more detailed analysis of it. Obviously I've just kind of touched on the basic points of the poem which you need to get. Um, annotate the poem in your book. Um, look up the difficult words. Come up with your personal responses and perhaps come up with a, um, a response that's creative too. And then re review what you've done and teach the poem to the person sitting next to you, even if you're not entirely sure of it, and perhaps summarise it in one sentence, um, and that should help you. We've got to look at the learning objectives, and we, I told you I'd look at structure. Um, this poem is structured in verses, um, and each verse covers, um, explores a particular kind of mood and imagery. And if we look at the first three verses, um, they are pastoral. They're, um, the imagery is full of discussion and description of the countryside um, using onomatopoeia oozed, murmurous, um, and to create a sense of the kind of beauty of nature. Um, then the poem, after um, this description of the pastoral, suddenly turns into this very kind of violent nightmare. And so we could say the poem is sort of structured in two sections, really. The verses that are about the pastoral, and the verses that are really a description of hell. And I think it's worth you looking at maybe one or two quotes that describe the hell of battle. Particularly he uses religious imagery. If you look at the hot blast and fury of hell's upsurge. And then um, he closes with a rhetorical question. Uh, a question that doesn't really need an answer. Why speak they not of comrades that went under? Tied that under, really underlined by the, the rhyme of wonder. This rhetorical question is very powerful because we realise, having read the poem, that they don't talk about um, what they've seen because it was so horrible. Um, and so uh, Owen uses a mixture of pastoral imagery, of religious imagery, he uses rhetorical questions, he uses techniques such as onomatopoeia to create uh, a sense of the beauty of nature, but he also uses 
um, onomatopoeia to create a sense of the hell of battle. So we have um, hot blast, plunged, um, upsurge, all onomatopoeic words, very kind of visceral sounding words that create a sense of the hell of battle.